you guys been working at it since the you know the early 2000s and writing or producing for artists like Ariana Grande, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, Usher, Justin Bieber. Like, what goes through your minds right now? Just kind of stopping there for a second, and be like, damn, we worked on all that. Uh, it's um, to be honest, it's still a little surreal, you know. Um, coming from the Virgin Islands to some of our accomplishments is is very surreal. Uh, you know, you listen to the radio, you hear songs come on, and it's like, wow, like me and my brother wrote this song. And then, you know, these artists are still artists that we still respect and look up to, you know? So, you know, being in the studio with them is surreal. You know, hearing the music come on on the radio is surreal. Uh, you know, having all these, these beautiful people here sh show up to come see me and my brother is surreal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's all surreal, man. It's amazing is what it is. And you listen back to all of those songs and you think of all the songs that you've written. Is there one that you wish you kept for yourself? You, you want to know what's funny? It's only one song and it, and it wasn't like the biggest song, but it, because it had the Caribbean element to it, we wrote a song for Chris Brown with Sean Paul called um, Brown Skin, Brown Skin Girl. Brown Skin Girl. Um, and every time I, we hear that song, even when we see Chris, we'd be like, <sighs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> but yeah, but other than that, nah, man, because, you know, me and my brother, I, we, we both feel like we have a unique sound and style. And, and when we make music for other people, that's not our style. You know what I mean? We've just been blessed to be genreless. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, pause in a room and it's like, oh, OK, this is the kind of music you want to make. OK, let's do it. You know what I mean? That's the vibe. The other interesting side of that, too, is, though, you guys write for a lot of women, yeah. you know, like yeah. how do you get in the head? of a female that's trying to go out and party. Did you have to do a lot of research and hang out a lot of women and, you know? I, you want to know what's so funny? I, I, I had a lot, a lot of girls at, at a certain point and it's, you know, when you talk, no, it's, 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 it's the truth, it's the truth. And, you know, just, you know, when, when, you know, just being around women and talking to them and then you know, hearing what they into at the time is like, you'd be like, oh, okay, that's what you want to say. Yeah. And then, you know, you interpret it and you go in the studio and you're like, yo, you know, a girl told me two weeks ago, you know, like, it's so funny, like, we did singing in the shower for Becky G. That was like, uh, yeah, I was talking to a girl, literally, and she was like, you know, saying something. I was like, yo, if you mess with me, you're going to be singing in the shower. And I was like, yo, that would be a good song, literally. No, it is, and I love that song, <laughs> and I sing it in the shower. Right? Exactly. Because that's how you feel, right, <laughs> ladies? Yes? Yes. Totally. Plus, you sound a lot better in the shower. Acoustics, right? man. <laughs> it's real. You sound Every, really good. Everyone sounds I ain't gonna lie. The shower. the shower and the car is like the Ooh, best stages yeah. in the world. Fuego right there. <laughs> true. T-Ron, uh, be careful, man, because uh, this interview is going to be online, and some of those girls you talk to might be like, yo, where are my royalties at? <laughs> I give you an idea for all well, those that's songs. Why, that's why I <laughs> We ain't gonna say no names. We're just gonna be like, you know, this was inspired, you know what I mean? That's funny. Speaking of inspiration, man, I mean, definitely one of the biggest songs this summer, and you all can remember, and they were probably a part of many great experiences that you had this summer. You know, like back in the day when it was like above 20 degrees and stuff? Uh, <laughs> we're talking about Locked Away. I, I wanna know two things here. How were you guys inspired to write that song? And then on the professional tip, how did Adam Levine get connected to that? So let's start off with just what inspired you guys. Well, um, Locked Away comes from a, a personal place. Uh, our father was locked up for five years, and our mom held him down the whole time. And uh, our parents have been together for 38 years. I love that. Can we just That's applaud so to that? 38 awesome. years together? That's beautiful, man. And um, so, you know, we was in a studio, uh, you know, with Dr. Luke and Sorkid, and, you know, the track was built, and we started humming melodies, and, you know, we just felt like the track had that, that feeling. You know, it brought those feelings and emotions out of us, and we just felt like that was a good topic, especially if we did it in a way that, as personal as a song is to us, we, we wanted to write it in a way where, where it was still very relatable to everybody else. You know, so... Um, you know, that's, that's really where the song comes from, yeah. you know, the story of our parents. And uh, as far as getting Adam Levine, um, Locked Away was already slated to be our first single before Adam Levine was on it. And uh, Dr. Luke and Socket were in the studio with Maroon 5 working on Sugar. And Dr. Luke was like, yo, I have this group from the Virgin Islands, uh, Rock City, our city. And um, yeah, I would love if, you know, you, you do a song with them. 
and Adam was familiar with us as yeah. writers. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, yo, I heard about them. You know, I'm familiar with their work. They're really talented. Um, I can't promise you I'll do a song with them, but if you play me some stuff that I like, then yeah, why not? And he heard Locked Away and was like, I'll definitely do that song. And before you know it, uh, CT featuring Adam Levine, Locked Away. And the rest is history. Yes. yes. I do have to ask you guys this question about the song, though, and your parents, right? They've been married for so long, your mom holding your dad down while he's in jail. Moving forward in your own relationships, are you looking for, or have you been looking for, like, that ride-or-die chick? And how do you test her to know she's going to be there and do that? I mean, every, I think everybody wants a ride-or-die partner, you know. You know, any, anybody would want that. I don't know, man. I, the only way you can test somebody is through time and yeah. through tribulation, and you know you gotta go through the roller coaster, really. And um, for us, it's kind of weird because finding a girl when you find a girl at this point, when you, you when you know, successful, you know, what I'm saying, or you feel like you're financially stable or you're good, and sure. then it's like, um, you know, you don't know. Sometimes you don't know if a girl there because. You could buy us stuff or, you know what I'm saying? So it, it all depends, man. I think it all takes time and, you know, just having the patience yeah. to for somebody to hit you like, yo, this girl right here, I could, you know, I could, we could rock it out, you know what I mean? Has that happened for you guys yet? For me? Yeah, yeah, for me. T-Ron? Yeah, 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 for me, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. She, okay, she's okay. watching this online, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, baby, I love I you. I don't want no problems. I don't want no problems. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Good stuff. How about you, woman? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're good? Yeah. All right, good stuff. <laughs> you know what's beautiful? Um, we were talking about, we were talking to each other outside, and, and something that shows you a lot about a person's character and who they are really deep down inside is, you know, you guys said you guys have been living in Atlanta for a long time now, but you brought your parents over from the Virgin Islands, and you guys are taking care of your parents now. And oh, definitely. Yeah. I think that's awesome. You know, you can tell a lot about a person when they say, you know what, Pops, Moms, you guys supported us through this crazy dream and roller coaster, now it's our turn to take care of you. So oh, yeah, congratulations on it. Oh, man, man. Yeah. thank you very thank much. You, yeah, man. It's a beautiful thank thing. You. Appreciate and you, it. You, you know what it was, too? Um, you know, um, back in the Virgin Islands, you know, we grew up in the projects. So after we leave and we move to the States, you know, chasing our dreams, um, the first, like, really, really big check we got was when we did our publishing deal. And the first thing we did with, with you know, with that money was, you know, move our parents out the projects, buy them a house in Atlanta, buy them a car, and you know, we've been taking of them ever since. That's beautiful, man. Let's give it up for them, guys. That's awesome. Thank you. I love that. Speaking more of your journey coming from the U.S. Virgin Islands, you know, specifically from St. Thomas, you know, having crazy success out there, you're having crazy success writing, producing for artists. Uh, as performers, you try to break in here to the U.S., right? And a lot of people that maybe don't do their reaches, don't know, they're like, uh, what these guys uh, this one hit wonder or whatever they have no idea how talented you guys are and you guys have been around for so long in this journey to break through the US as performers what would you say has been the most difficult thing or lowest moment and what has been the biggest victory so far in breaking into the US as performers I mean I would say <clears throat> the lowest moment is um, I would you know when I would figure out when my when my daughter was born, you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, at that point of time we were working regular jobs and we you know, it were like, yo, we want to you want to make music and you want to be creative, but now it's like, yo, I have a baby and I, you know, I know you gotta buy pampers and you gotta do stuff like that and just and just, you know, going through the motions of Wanting to be a great father, like our father is a great father, but still wanting to chase your dream. I think that was the lowest point that yeah. me personally had hit. And then me and my brother were going back and forth like, well, yo, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? And we just went hard and thank God music eventually picked up. And um, I would say the biggest victory still is buying our parents a house. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't, you know, like to anybody that know, like literally we start off living in a shack. The first bed we ever get come out, my father was a garbage man, so when he get out of jail, that's a job he get. First bed we ever had was from the trash. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, we live literally in a shack. The bathroom was outside and at 6 p.m. it pitch black. So if you take a bath, you got like light candles and you know what I'm saying? So we, we come from real, real like poverty. You know what I'm saying? Like bread and cheese every day for for breakfast for lunch for dinner it's like bread <laughs> cheese 
a cup of water. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, so, yeah. so I mean, I mean, our greatest victory was, yeah, man, gain, gain our parents a house and, and you know, seeing that smile on your mother's face when it's like, I can't believe, you know, yeah. my son by me, you know, and Colin has, you know, my mother have nine sisters and uh, one brother. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that, that was a whole lot of phone calls because she called every last one. <laughs> Yo! Yo, Natalie, my son them just buy me a house, girl. Aww. She had to. She's <laughs> yeah, so no, proud. no. We was excited, you know. And my my fa my father, like I say, he was the one who always were like. In the Virgin Islands, there is no the own, this this gonna sound bad, but until me and my brother for a certain point, I we've never seen anybody successful yeah. outside of a senator and a drug dealer. Mm. That's it. Yeah. These like you work for the government. Or you sell drugs. That's right. it. So growing up, my father was like, you're definitely going to sell drugs. You know, I went, you know, he went to prison for stealing, but he was like, look, you, I don't want prison for my sons. And he just was like, yo, music is going to be your way out of this place, and you're going to do something. And for years, they tell my father he was crazy. He was like, nobody never make it in music from here. This island is, St. Thomas is 32 square miles. We have a population of like, what? 45 to 47,000 people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, this just don't happen. It don't happen. You need to, your kids need to go to college. You need to give them more realistic goals. And yeah. so he was just like, yes, I was right. Awesome. That's all he wanted to say. I was right the whole time. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, you know, going into Valentine's Day weekend, we think of Valentine's Day and we think about relationships in regards to boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. But I mean, that's true love right there. Yeah, We're a family that sticks together no matter what. Family and, is everything. And thank you for sharing that oh, journey no, with you. us. You know, thank you so absolutely. much. It's so awesome to to see the other side. You know, behind the music and beyond the music of of who you guys are.